name is Ariane Beagle. I'm a professor at the Leiden University in the Netherlands and uh, I work on uh, cryo-electron tomography of bacterial cells to understand how they use their molecular machinery to interact with their environment. So cryo-electron tomography is a technique that allows you to uh, image samples uh, in, a, in a frozen hydrated state um, in three dimensions. So um, you, you vitrify your sample, such as, for example, bacterial cells. You insert into it into a, a transmission electron microscope, um, and then you rotate it around its axis, and you collect a whole series of two-dimensional projections. And then later, you use these two-dimensional projections to recreate a three-dimensional image of your sample. CryoET allows you to study microbes at macromolecular resolution in three dimensions. So um, in, in, compared to traditional EM techniques, you don't have to stain or dehydrate or plastic embed your sample. So the native structure is preserved and you can really understand how the molecular machinery inside these bacteria um, looks like and also get information on how they function. For example, one core question we have is how microbes sense their environment uh, in a behavior called chemotaxis. So these are um, large chemoreceptor arrays in the cells that sense um, sugars uh, and, and amino acids in the environment and allows the cells to move uh, toward these, these uh, sources of sugars and attractants. So these arrays are huge macromolecular complexes that are uh, at the cell poles of the bacteria. Uh, and we are studying how these, uh, first of all, how the structure of these arrays uh, is in their native state, and then also how, how they function when they, when they get activated. So first of all, of course, <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> um, but for example, um, many pathogens use this behavior as the first step of host invasion. So if you think about Lyme disease, for example, so this bacterium and it um, infects you, uses this chemotactic behavior as this first step of host invasion. So understanding it might help us also finding ways to prevent infection or, or use it as antibiotic targets. Oh yes, it uh, certainly can. So. Uh, imaging whole but small bacterial cells is already possible with um, what we've done in the last 15 years. Um, thicker cells such as eukaryotic cells or, or tissue samples are now also possible um, with a new technique called a cryofib. So in, with this you can um, freeze or use frozen samples of, of larger samples um, and use uh, a an iron beam to cut little windows in, in these samples and then make them thin enough to also image them with tomography. So going back to this example of these chemoreceptor arrays, so these, these large arrays, they function in, in the context of this whole array. Um, so there has been a lot of studies done using traditional, like, more classical uh, structural methods like uh, crystallography or NMR, where you had to um, isolate small parts of these, these complexes to, to resolve the study. But this doesn't really tell you how uh, all these proteins work together in concert. So you really have to study these proteins in the array context, and that's what uh, cryo-T allows you to do. The strength of my lab is, is combining um, real microbiology work with, with the structural work. So we are at the interface between microbiology and you know, the cryo-EM uh, methods. So it's, a, it's basically a bridge between microbiology and structural biology. And it, it helps us answer questions that not many people uh, can address. So it depends on how uh, involved you want to become, right? If you just have a project where you think, okay, well, in this one case, I want to do um, tomography to add to my, my research, then I think the best way is to go and find a collaborator that will you know, help you do that. 
But if you're prepared um, to invest some, some more effort in it and want to really do it in, in your own lab, um, the good thing is you really don't need your own uh, big machine. So what you need is um, your setup for sample preparation um, and access to a screening microscope. So if you can prepare your sample and know it's good, then you can actually just ship your samples to, uh, for example, one of the open access uh, facilities. So, um, for example, at Leiden University, we have the Nissen Center. It's the uh, Dutch uh, National Center. And we have uh, national and international customers from all over the world. So even from Singapore, uh, people can ship their samples and we have expert staff on site that can handle your sample. They can insert it in the microscope and collect the data. Um, and then the customers get the, the collected data. So it's quite convenient. I think the, the thing I love the most is like every, every tomogram, every cell is, is different. So you always find exciting new things, you, you know, things you don't expect. And, it's like you glimpse in this unseen world and it's, it's always fascinating. Even if you image the same um, species all the time, it's, it's always fascinating. <laughs>